our theme this week is Purpose Lived. And so we're going to keep that in mind. Our theme is Purpose Lived, and we want to uh, be living out that purpose. Our scripture is coming from Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 16 through 26. And if you have your Bibles, we would like for you to turn there. If not, we want you to look up on the screen because the scriptures are written there on the screen. It says in verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, and of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are crisis have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just come before you right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, O oh God, for this opportunity that you have given us. And so, Lord, we just pray, O oh Heavenly Master, that you would help us to hear from you. You would help us, O oh God, to see it the way you see it, so that we can do it the way you would have it to be done, that in all you may get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we are so thankful, O oh Heavenly Master, that you left on record uh, what you want for us to do. We, we don't have to guess about it. We don't have to uh, try to feel our way. But you left it here in plain English for us so that we can read it and that through your spirit we can understand it and so that we can walk worthy of what you're called for us to be. And so, Lord, we just pray, oh God, today, oh God, that as believers, that you would help us to align our lives with your word. Lord, if there are any in the building, and that don't know you, that are not saved, that have not given their life to you, have not surrendered to you being Lord over their life. We pray today for their salvation. We pray, O oh Heavenly Master, that they will say yes to your will, yes to your way, O oh Lord, and that whatever you say, they will obey it, O oh God. And so, Lord, we just pray, O oh Heavenly Master, that you would touch right now. And then, Lord, we pray that you would help us, that we would take what was said today and that we would spread it like bad news. We would tell others, O oh God, help them, O oh God, if what we're being helped, that we would help others, O oh God, to know what you're calling for us to do and not just know it, but tell them how to do it. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. We pray that in Jesus' name that Brian would be decreased, that you would be increased. We pray in Jesus' name that it won't be Brian they hear, but it will be you that they hear, oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray that they will hear and respond to you, oh Lord, that their lives will not, not be the same. We thank you. We pray this now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we say together, amen, amen, amen. It's so good to be in the house of God one more time. So good to see each and every one of you. 
Well, we're not going to waste your time this morning. We just want you to understand that today we're talking about living in the spirit, living in the spirit. That's the title, living in the spirit. You should already know that because it should be at the top of your page or the papers that you got. Or if you looked at it on the app, you should see it. It says living in the spirit. And so the, the thing I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, is that there are times where we mess stuff up. Uh, you know, uh, Paul was, that's really what the letter is really talking about. The book of Galatians is a letter that he wrote to the Galatian church. He was trying to help them because he said he had came and preached the good news, preached the gospel to them. But when he left, it's some other folks showed up. And they had another gospel. They had a different kind of gospel. They they had a bootleg gospel that they showed up with that they had manufactured in order to uh, have the people to live by a legalistic way of saying things. What were you talking about, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm so glad y'all are so, so studious people this morning. Y'all want to know. Well, they, they, they were telling them things like this. It, well, it's not just enough for you to put your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, but they told them you can't eat ham sandwiches. Uh, they told him you got to be circumcised. You, they, they told him you got to follow the ceremonial laws that are written in the Old Testament. Uh, these individuals that came by, these were Jewish individuals, and, and, and the scholars called them Judaizers who showed up in the church in Galatia and, and, and was basically telling them that what Paul told you, he didn't give you the whole story. He gave you a half gospel. Now I'm going to give you a full gospel. I'm going to give you all of of it and they had all these rules and regulations that they were saying that the folk had to complete in order to really be saved. Well, well Paul said, hold up, that 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 ain't true. Paul Paul had to write them a letter, say, hold up, I've heard about this. I I, I want to help the folk and I, I don't want them to get caught up in, 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 in being very legalistic. Sometimes we're like that, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes we, 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 we get our minds and our hearts convinced on something that may be good for just you. Uh, it might be what you really need. But instead of you keeping it with you, you try to tell everybody that they need to do it the same way you doing it. Uh, you know, everybody ain't weak in the same area that you weak in. Uh, and, and, and so if that means you said, well, you know what? I took the TVs out of my house. I don't watch TV anymore. And then you then you be like a Judaizer saying this. And all of y'all, y'all need to get them TVs. That's the devil box out of y'all house. See, you see what I'm doing? I, I'm making something that would I know that has been a weakness in my life and trying to make it, and what I did, make it where all y'all got to do the same thing. And to that, you know what I said? Show me that Bible verse. Show me that Bible verse where God said that you got to take all TVs out of your house. Now, I do know the book of Hebrews chapter 12 said we need to lay aside every weight. Now, everybody weight ain't the same weight. <laughs> Uh, what may be a weight in your life don't mean it's a weight in my life. Every weight and the sin. Now, see, when it's sin, we all got to let it. Come on now. If it's sin and the sin that does so easily beset us or get us off track, he said, we need to lay that stuff aside so then we can run the way God wants us to run, looking unto Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith. And so Paul that came in and told them the good news of the gospel. And you know what made the gospel such great news? What makes it such great news is, is that you ain't got to do it. Come on now. You know, you ain't got to do it. That's that what makes it such great news. Is that, well, I, I, I got to live good enough. He said, well, you might well get that one up. You ain't going to be able to. Because God's standard is perfection. And guess what? You already messed up. Ain't nobody in here perfect. You, matter of fact, you showed up here messed up. You were born in sin. <laughs> You've been shaping in iniquity. So, so we realize that, hold up, well, if you're looking saying that I'm going to be able to get to heaven based on my works, the life that I'm living, that I'm going to earn heaven, 
Well, that ain't good news. That ain't good news. That ain't good news. So Paul said, well, that's not it. He says, hold up. It's not my works, but it's the works of Jesus Christ. It's not what I have done, but it's what Jesus Christ did for me that makes it possible. See, that's why it's such good news. That, that's why we call it good news. That's what the word gospel means. It means good news. It, it ain't good news if I got to do it all. Because I mess up. And I ain't always thinking right. And I ain't always doing it right. If it's based on me, I'll never make it. Matter of fact, the Bible says that in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, look, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. He, if you think that you're going to produce good works and that's going to get you in, he said, no, no. It's, but it's by his grace that he saved us huh, with the washing of the word of God and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. He says, hold up, it's not what we've done. And see, that's, that's, why, that's why Jesus came. He came in order to do something we couldn't do for ourselves. In order to live a life we couldn't live for ourselves, he died so that we could have life, and not just any kind of life, but an abundant life. And so you, you, I'm just saying to tell you, you, you're not going to earn it. You're not going to earn it. He, he told that you can't earn it because Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9 says this. He says, for by grace. So it's the grace of God. It's his unmerited favor that he shows on us. We didn't earn it. That's what we mean by merited. You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. It's what God gave to you as a gift. I used to say this a lot when I would be out witnessing. I would tell people this. I said, you know what? If I brought you a gift at Christmas time and you immediately reach into your pocketbook or your wallet in order to pay me for that gift, I say it ain't a gift no more. It's a purchase. See, it's a gift, but I just receive it. But it's a purchase when you're trying to earn it, when you're trying to buy it. When you think you can do something in order to say, I deserve this. The Bible said, no, it's by grace that you've been saved through faith. So my faith is in the finished work of Jesus Christ through faith. He says, that's how I get saved. I put my faith in him. And so Paul says that he went to Galatians. He told them this good news. And some folks showed up and told them, Paul didn't tell you right. So these people had a legalistic mindset. There was some there that was saying, hey, you got to do it this way. You got to do this. You got to be circumcised. You got to eat this. You can't eat that. You got to do it this way. You got to follow the old, the, 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 the old uh, law. You got to do it that way. And Paul was saying no. He says, if in chapter 3, he says, uh, who has bewitched you? Who, who then tricked you? Thinking that what was begun by the spirit that you can finish it with your flesh he said hold up if the you needed the spirit to get say you're gonna need the spirit to live say you ain't gonna be able to do it you you can't do it, it, it it's not what you do it's what he does through you and so what we have here before us, we got Paul talking to the, the, the Corinthian church, and he's getting down to it. He's saying, hold up, some of y'all then, then went way on the other spectrum. See, some people want it to be, you know, they, they want to be legalistic. They're going to tell you how to live, want to do it. But then you got the other folk on the other side of the spectrum who just say, I got a license to sin. I can do whatever I want to. Thank, thank God for Jesus. And so they want to live any kind of way. They can just feel like they can just see and all they want to. He, and then they'll sing the song, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. So I can just do whatever I want to do. And Paul is saying, no, that's not true. That's not true. You, you can't live on that extreme, and you can't live on the other extreme. You, you got to be right down the middle. And so what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that, hey, in order for us to really live the way God wants us to live, to really live out the purpose uh, 
that God has given us as believers, as Christians, as saints, we have to be led and filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, that's the only way to do it. The, the only way to really live this life is not because you're going to muster up enough strength, not because you're going to pull yourself up. I'm going to make it happen. I'm, I'm going to wheel this thing in. He's saying, no, that's not how it works. That's not how we're going to be who God is calling for us to be. Well, how are we going to do it, preacher? So glad y'all asked. Y'all so studious this morning. Well, the first thing I want you to see here, y'all, is that if you're going to live the purpose that God has called for you to live, you're going to be who God wants you to be, you're going to be the kind of person, the saint, who conforms. And what do you mean by that? Well, so glad you asked. Look at verse 16. He says, I say then, because he had just said uh, in the previous verse, he said, look, here, y'all are biting and y'all going to devour each other, you know, because we're getting these squabbles my way. And then the other person saying they want it their way. And then the Christians are fighting against each other. He said, it shouldn't be this way. He says, so how do we solve this? What, what should happen when, when we're not really living out the way God has intended for us to live? And Paul gives us the answer. He says, we conform ourselves. How do we conform? Well, he says it there. He says, we walk in the spirit. Well, what does he mean? Well, the word walk, it, it really means to, 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 to make one's way, to progress, to, to make due use of opportunities. But, but the way the Hebrews use this in their language, it really means to live. It, it means to live in the spirit, uh, which means to allow the Holy Spirit to regulate your life, to tell you what to do and what not to do and how to do it. it, it it's really just letting yourself be guided by him. The conduct, the way I do things, the way I think, the way I feel, it ought to be guided by the spirit of God. Y'all see that? He says, look, if we Walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, hold up. If I'm walking in the spirit, I, I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Matter of fact, Paul said it a different way in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. He says this, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because they do not walk according to their flesh. But according to the spirit, he says, hold up. They're being guided by the spirit of God. They're not walking according to their, 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 their sinful desires, the stuff that ain't right. They're, they're not walking that way. They're walking according to what the spirit of God wants us to do. Matter of fact, we heard it earlier this morning. Paul said it another way in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, where when Pastor Kenea so eloquently laid out verse 18 for us, he says, don't be drunk with wine wherein is dissipation or excess. He says, but be filled with the spirit. That word filled means to be under the control of the spirit. It's like wine. You know, that person said, you know what? That ain't them talking. That's the wine talking. Um, because they didn't drunk so much. It ain't them. This wine didn't took control. It's, it didn't took control and it's doing stuff to them. And they saying stuff they wouldn't normally say, acting in ways they wouldn't normally act, doing stuff they wouldn't normally do. And guess what? When you're under the control of the spirit, you're going to act in a way that you wouldn't normally act. You're going to talk in a way you shouldn't, you don't normally talk and you're going to do some things you wouldn't normally do because you are filled under the control of the spirit of God. Now, some of us don't do that. Some of us not letting the Holy Spirit have his way. So the scripture tells us, look, do not, don't do it. Don't, don't grieve the spirit. Don't, 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 don't quench the spirit, it says in another text. The thing is, when, when the Holy Spirit, you know how it is, when, when you know what's best. See, you know, we, we might have some, uh, uh, some, some sports fans. Uh, my son, Brandon, he was watching the University of Memphis football game yesterday, and, and he was like, well, I'm getting ready to see them lose. They ain't got about two minutes. And, and, and then I, I left. I said, well, I'm going to run down to the store. I'll be back because I needed him to help me with something. I came back, and, and he he was like, man, it's a lot can happen in two minutes. He said, man, they had an opportunity. 
They had an opportunity to win the game. He could see if they had just made some, some different tactical decisions that they could have went down and scored on that team and won the game. He said, but they didn't do it that way. They did it differently. And he says, that's the reason they lost the game. And many of us, many of us, many of us, you know, we're making decisions that we really shouldn't be making. We're doing some things that we really shouldn't be doing. And the Holy Spirit is saying, man, they could have won that one if they had made some different decisions. The Holy Spirit is like, man, if they just listened to me, if they had just asked me, I would have led them in the right direction. But, but that's not what they did. They did what they wanted. They didn't listen to me. I tried to tell them. I brought up the Bible verse. Trust in the Lord. And they dismissed it. They said, I ain't going to do that right now. I, I know what I need to do. And they lean to their own understanding. And so what we have here is that God is calling for us. If we're going to really uh, be who God is calling for us to be uh, and not end up uh, on the legalistic side, not lean up, uh, end up on the, the, the license to sin, I can just do whatever I want to do in order to stay where God wants us to be, you got to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Well, I know, I know, I know. Y'all sitting there. Y'all, y'all said, well, what does that really mean? How, how am I going to really allow the Holy Spirit to have his way? Well, I'm so glad. Y'all asking great questions this morning. But let me read verse 17 and 18, and then we're going to we move on. So it says the flesh lusts after the spirit. Now, that word lust, it doesn't mean uh, what we would normally say desire. It desires the spirit and want to be said. No, it, it, dis, it uh, has opposition to the spirit. And so our flesh wants to uh, work in opposition to the spirit, and the spirit it's working against the flesh. It, it's saying, no, no, I can't let you live the way the flesh wants to live. He says, and these are contrary to one another so that uh, you find yourself not doing the things that you wish. And you know, sometimes, man, I wish I had handled that differently. Man, I wish I hadn't said that. You know, but, but instead of you allowing the spirit to have his way, you let the flesh kick in. And, 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 you know, sometimes we're, we're doing the wrong thing. We're doing the wrong thing that is causing us to operate the wrong way. You, don't you know if you feed the flesh, the flesh going to get stronger? Um, so you got to watch. You got a problem with cussing, right? Right? <laughs> you got a problem with cussing. You, 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 know, uh, uh, you know, you lose your temper. You get mad. You say some things. Uh, they ain't Sunday school words, but we call them Sunday school words. You say some stuff you don't really supposed to be saying, but you say them. And, and then you say, man, you know, I wish it could be different. Man, I, I shouldn't have said that. Man, I just lost my temper. I did all this. And you said, man, it's a big deal. It's a problem. And, and, and how, how, how do I fix it? Well, it's not watching shows that you listen to cussing all the time. It's not watching, you know, y'all know, you know, it's some, it's some reality shows that you could watch that, that, that ain't helping you. But if you're feeding your flesh, and, and, and guess what you said? I don't know why I can't stop. So you fed your flesh Bible verses, right? <laughs> no, that ain't what you did. Look, what you feel this thing with is going to affect how you react and, and what you do. And so the Spirit is trying to get us to get in the book. He's trying to get us to read God's word so he can renew our mind. But if you keep filling your mind with other stuff that you know ain't right, and then you're going to lie to yourself, it don't affect me. That don't affect me. That, that doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. But look at what the Bible says in verse 18 there. He says, but if you are led by the Spirit, he says, guess what? You've been set free. You're not under the law. You're, you're not under the, 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 the law and what it says. 
See, because the thing is, and this might be a little harder for us to grasp, but what he's saying here is, is that a person that is led by the Spirit of God is going to do what God wants. And so the law ain't really for the folk who doing what God wants. The law is for the folk who ain't doing what God wants. And so punishment is, you know, he, he's bringing out these things for a person that is under the law is one who hadn't gave their life to the Lord God Almighty. He said, so we shouldn't operate like we're not, that, that like we're under the law. We should operate like we're being led by the Spirit of God. So, I'm going to conform. I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. So, uh, how do I do that? Well, first of all, we got to learn that we conquer. We got to do some conquering. Well, what should I conquer? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Verse 19, y'all see that? The works of the flesh. Now, all of these might not be you. But there are some lingering around in you. Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lewdness. Idolatry. I mean, it's a long list, y'all. Sorcery. When it gets to you, don't holler. Don't holler. Hatred. Don't say ouch. Don't do it. Don't do it. Contentions. Jealousy. Outbursts of wrath. You know, y'all know you call it that. You know, he, they clicked. They they lost their mind. They they shot off. There you go. They they they. You know, y'all know how we 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 don't say these words exactly. But you know, you jealous. You know, you you selfish. It's all about you. You got selfish ambitions. You you know you. It might look like you're trying to help these other folks, but it's really about you. Uh, you're just using other people. You're dissensions. You're, you're dividing. The Bible says that, hey, don't you know that, that, that it's some things that God hates? And he says, sowing discord among the brethren. He said he hates that. But some folk, that's what they do. They, they, they're trying to divide, not trying to bring us together. He said heresies. That's bad biblical teaching. You're not teaching the Bible right. You, you're bringing up stuff that, that God doesn't say, and you're making up stuff. He says you got envy in your heart. You got murders and drunkenness and rivalries. And, and then he says, and other stuff just like this stuff. Just in case you, you might say, well, mine ain't quite on that list. He said, but if it's like that, he says it's on the list. He said, but I didn't told you before. He said, and I'm going to tell you right now, that people who practice, who practice, that means I constantly practice living this way. Hear what he's saying now. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you hear the pastor say a lot of times, if you say I got the can't help it, that means you're practicing it. That means God ain't really worked in your life, and he ain't really set you free, and you ain't got no choice but to do what you're doing. Well, then the conclusion is you really ain't saved. You really hadn't gave your life to him because whom the son has set free is free indeed. I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody because they like, well, ain't nothing wrong. Yes, it is because those who practice it's like, this just the way I am. Those who practice, I can't help myself. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I've said this plenty of times, but I'm going to say it again. I don't have a problem with strugglers. I got a problem with folk who said, I give up. This just the way I am. Whoa. Those who practice such things will not inherit. So what the Spirit comes in to do in order to really allow the Holy Spirit to have his way, he is making it possible so you can know this list. So you can say, oh, the Spirit is here to help me not to live this way, to stop doing the things that God don't want me doing. So when we look at this list, he we said, well, well, I get drunk. Well, we, we, you know, y'all got some other names for it. Tipsy, you know, stumbling, I guess. 
you know, can't sit up straight, slurred speech, uh, you know. Whatever you want to call it, you you might give it another name and say, no, I ain't really drunk. I was just talking. I, you, you, you know what you are, you know. Don't, you might give it some new names, but it's still the same thing. Huh? You know, you, you. You know, it affects you the next morning. You, you, you know, uh, y'all know how we do. I, I hold my liquor. You can hold it, okay? I know you can hold it. But if you wake up and your pants are wet, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to give us some pictures, you know, you know, because sometimes we will, we'll act like we ain't doing stuff. We'll try to, you know, make other terms, say, well, I ain't doing that. I, and you give it a new term, you know, as if it make it different, you know, like, it's, it, you know, it's like, I ain't stealing, I'm embezzling. It's the same thing. I don't care what you call it. You can, you can say something else, you know, and, and give it a new name, but it's still the same stuff. Right? You know? He said, so God is saying, hey, I, I want you to stop doing those things. But the only way to stop, you got to be led by the Spirit. You got to conduct your life the way the Spirit is leading you to conduct your life. So, pastor around here says, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. How many of y'all prayed and said, Lord, should I go to the corner liquor store today and buy that fifth? <laughs> you ain't asked God nothing. Just tell the truth, shame the devil. You ain't asked him nothing. You just did what your flesh wanted. Come on, tell the truth, Shane. Oh, well, 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 she ain't here today. Uh, now, he ain't, he ain't shame. Just tell the truth. The devil ain't shame. Just tell the truth. He ain't shame when you're doing stuff. Come on. See, you know, the thing is, we ain't practicing what the Bible is telling us to do. Now, who the one wrote the book? The Bible said that the Holy Spirit moved the writers to write what was in the book. So the Holy Spirit is the one who's doing the guiding when he reminds you about what the books say. I can't tell you how many times that, you know, you be wanting to be mad at folk, and then the Holy Spirit will bring the book to my mind. Pray for them that have, who have despitefully misused you and then all manner of evil against you falsely. Now, I got a decision to make. Either I'm going to be led by the Spirit or I'm going to dismiss what the Spirit is telling me to do, and I'm going to let this flesh have his way. Some of y'all ladies and took your earrings off. Um, I ain't, uh-uh. He ain't doing this. <laughs> we ain't playing that. You know, you didn't, you didn't, you know, you just didn't listen, and then you wonder why. God is giving you his word to help you. But when you dismiss it and say, I'm going to do something else, and y'all know how we do. My mama got a temple. My daddy got a temple. My sister got a temple. My brother got a temple. We just got temples. I thought you were saved. Now, just because your daddy ain't saved or your mama ain't saved or your brothers and sisters ain't saved, but you saved. You can't keep going back like, oh, so I can still act like the mother folk. No, I'm supposed to be different. I've been born again. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Look what he says in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 13. He says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the spirit, you but if by the spirit you put to death, you got to put these things to death. The deeds of the body you will live. So how do you put them to death? You starve it to death. You stop doing stuff you know going to feed it. You got a problem. I said this other Sunday. You got a problem with drinking. Stop going to the liquor store. Huh, you know that if I went over to so-and-so, so-and-so house, and they got a bar there, and they just got liquor all laid up on the thing, don't go over there. They ain't helping you. 
that, that's just not going to help you. If you got a problem you're trying to stop, that ain't how you stop. Hmm? And, and that's with anything else. Huh? You know, you just have to say, hey, I know that that's not going to help me. I'm feeding my flesh, and it's getting stronger and stronger. It makes it harder and harder to stop till you get to the point you're like, I just can't do it. I tried everything. Really? Pastor, keep telling you stuff to do. Oh, read your Bible. I ain't got time. Well, stop watching the pornos. You'll have time. You'll have time. Stop watching the silly videos on your phone. You'll have time. Huh? You know, st stop watching all the basketball games and football games. You'll have time. But that we don't want to change nothing. We want to keep doing what we're doing and squeeze Jesus in when we get a little opportunity. Yeah, I'm going to get him in here. Okay. See, I did good, then. I? I? got a little Jesus in there. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to get a room. It's a song I said, make room. I, I'll make room for you. It's a Christian song. It sounds really good, but it ain't really true. Jesus don't want a room. He want the whole house. He want the whole thing. Not He don't want just a piece of your life. He want it all. And you're supposed to give it all to him. So listen to how scripture says that. He says, look, this is what you're supposed to do. He says this, that you put off concerning your former conduct. He said, put that stuff away. Put it off. That old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. He said, it continues to grow corrupt as much as you keep feeding it. It'll keep getting more and more corrupt. He says, you need to put that away. Don't, don't, don't feed it. Starve it to death. Look what he says in another uh, uh, letter. He says, therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil design, covetedness, which is idolatry. He says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put on these or put off these, put off that anger, the wrath, the malice, the blasphemy, the filthy language out of your mouth. I went too fast. He says, put that stuff on. Now, the thing is, you got to be determined you're going to kill it. You, 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 you're going to crucify it. You're, you're, you're going to conquer it. You're not going to let it. See, sometimes we don't really want to conquer. You know, it's like, well, I don't want to be that holy. You, you want to be a little holy. No, you're supposed to want to be all God wants you to be. And so your objective is to conquer, to put to death, to put it away, not to hold on to it. So, but it don't just stop there. Because some people, they'll say, well, I, I don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. Oh, they read, I don't do that no more. But then it's more to just not doing something. You got to replace it by doing what God calling you to do. See, this is how we really live out the purpose. Because the Holy Spirit ain't just there to tell you to stop doing wrong. And, but he's there to show you how to do what God's will is. And so that's where we get. We must cultivate. We must cultivate. We, look, he, he didn't tell you to produce it. He says, look what happens. He says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He says, against such there is no law. Remember what I said earlier about we're not under the law. He said, ain't no law for this kind of living. Ain't no law when you're doing what's right, when you're doing what God wants. That you're gentle, you have self-control. And you can't have one of these without because they're all connected. Huh? They're all connected, my brothers and sisters. And so what he's saying is, is that, hold up. When I allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in my life, well, what does the Holy Spirit use? I said he uses two things. He got the people of God and the word of God. The Holy Spirit will move his people to come and to instruct you in order to help you, to correct you, to be there for you. See, all those one another's in Scripture, the Holy Spirit is there to help you to carry those one another's out. 
God is calling for us to teach each other. When I learn what's right, I'm supposed to help my fellow brother or sister in Christ. But sometimes we don't. We just keep it to ourselves and say, like we do with some people who are not saved, we say they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear But God is calling for us to do what is right. Remember Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And then, therefore, you'll give glory to God in heaven. Hmm. They, people ought to be able to see that you're living differently. Not that I'm just stopping doing other stuff, but I'm starting to do it the way he wants it done. It's not just an absence of lying, but it's showing that I'm telling the truth now. And that's what God is calling for us to do, my brothers and sisters. As we look here at this list, he's saying, hold up. This is what the Holy Spirit will produce and cultivate in you if you let him have his way. Well, when I was a kid, at my daddy's house, they had, he had some peace trees, and he had some plum trees. And I, I remember that plum tree was in the back of the house, and, and man, when, when he first put the plum tree up, it wasn't that big. It's a little something, you know. And then it just grew year after year. And man, it just produced more. And more fruit, the more it grew. And man, them plums would be so big and juicy. I even got a whooping for trying to get it off too soon. Daddy saw me out the window. And I was at, and he hollered and I dog it. I didn't got caught. <laughs> but the whole point is, is that I couldn't get a full tree the first year. And it wasn't full of fruit the first year. It had to cultivate. You had to take time and effort. And that's why the scripture keeps saying, be not weary in well-doing. Huh? You're doing what is right. If you're reading the word of God, you're spending time in that, you're allowing him to have his way. Don't get tired of doing what you know is right. Because you'll reap if you don't give up. And so God uses the people, he uses his word in order to shape us and help us to cultivate and to become who he wants us to be. The real question this morning is do you want to be who God wants you to be? I didn't say I want you to tell God what you want to be. And you try to pray and say, Lord, this is what I want. As if we can give him an order of what we want and he supposed to supply what we want. God already got a plan for us. And what I've learned is I got to tear up Brian's plan and put aside what I want and let God have his way and so every time I get a hint that Brian want to do his thing I got to crucify it I got to kill it I got to starve it to death I was talking to my son the other day little Brian and I said hey hey how's your reading going he said well it ain't going that good I said I'm gonna tell you something I did this is what I did I said I ain't turning the tv on at all I'm not going to watch nothing until I read. I ain't going to do until I do what I know. I'm going to put God first. I ain't doing none of that other stuff until I see because what tends to happen, we'll do all the other stuff. And then say, I ain't, ain't had time. I just, you know, I, I was like, no. If he's supposed to be first, why are you watching TV first? Why are you playing games first? Why are you doing everything else first but not putting him first? So maybe today, maybe you looked and you said, oh, I see what I've been messing up. I see what I need 
to do. Maybe your problem is, is that you're not really sold out on the fact that you're supposed to be conformed and allowing the Holy Spirit to shape you so then you can conquer. Or maybe you said, well, I got that part, but I ain't really been conquering because I've been feeding the flesh instead of starving the flesh. You said, well, well, I'm doing all right there, but maybe you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to cultivate through consistent obedience, consistently letting him have his way, whatever the case is. Today is a good day to respond. If you're saved, you didn't say, hey, I don't care what it is. I'm supposed to say yes to his will, yes to his way. But if you're unsaved today, if you said, well, I don't, I ain't even got that straight yet. I, I hadn't given my life to him. Well, today is a good day. The Bible said, come unto him, and he'll give you rest because he doing the work. All you got to do is work with him. Just allow him to have his way in your life. But you got to come with faith. Hebrews says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh, you must believe that God is, and he is a diligent rewarder of them that, uh, a reward of them that diligently seek him. And so you got to diligently put the effort. I got to seek him. I got to know what he wants and to do what he wants. So as we open the doors of the church, maybe you're here and you're saying, hey, Pastor, I need help. Maybe you're here today and say, hey, I need to be saved. Maybe you're here today and saying, I need to repent. I've done it wrong. I messed it up. Well, the Bible said the day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Today is a day to respond. While you still got the blood running warm in your veins, I'm going to live in the spirit. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to let God's word abide in me. And I going to abide in him. If the stuff you coming up in your mind ain't scripture, you ain't letting the word abide in you now we got a lot of good sayings but that don't mean they biblical so if you can't find it in the book you need to let that go if it ain't built on God's word it ain't worth having I need to do it his way so if you're here my brothers and sisters we want you to respond we're going to end and we're going to go into our CGC classes and we would love for you to stay around and the women meet in here. The young women are at the back. The youth or the high school and middle school are in the room at the back and nursery and kindergarten are over here where the bathrooms at, across from the bathrooms. And we have our upper and lower elementary that meet in the back here and our men Young men, older men are also meeting over in the fellowship hall as well as the new members class. And so we want you to respond when you go to these classes because we're here to help. We don't want you to struggle because we're here to help you through the struggle. Remember, I don't have a problem with strugglers. The problem I have with is folk who said it's just the way I am when God's words say different. So please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're getting ready to end, and we're going to transition over into our classes. But let us pray. Lord, we just come before you. Lord, we come before you right now, O oh God, thanking you, O oh God, for this time that you've given us. Lord, we pray, O oh 